saying, G'day, makers and shakers, how you going? I thought I'd just take a little bit of time out uh, to make a little bit of a presentation on pocket hole joinery. Um, this is quite a popular form of uh, joining bits of wood together. It's probably more well known in the United States and it's sort of filtering into Australia. Uh, a lot of people have asked me and uh, I've always recommended it. Um, I find it quite an easy practice to actually just have a jig, uh, set up all your presets, drill into your bit of wood, clamp it up and join two bits together. It's, a, it's just a, an awesome method um, that has now sort of given it a little bit of enticement to uh, just the general hobbyist, the do-it-yourself person who wants to on the weekend perhaps do a little bit of a construction job not too sure with some other techniques, you know, should I use dowels or, um, well, you know, if you've got the money and you can get a domino, floating tenons, all be, you know, that's fantastic. And uh, But just for the sake, it's, it's not a big price commitment to set yourself up with one of these um, jigs and it's it's quite a lot of fun actually. Um, I, I've been using this type of joinery technique for I think a few years now and uh, look some are against it uh, most most I've spoken to do use it uh, actually love it so um, I'll do a little bit of a presentation on uh, just the basics of it I'll show you a little bit about the uh, the drill bit the actual jig itself and then we'll go ahead and um, drill a hole a couple of holes and just basically join maybe uh, a couple of bits of timber on a 90 degree and it's it's such such a good way to you know perhaps for learners to have a go um, and the best thing about it as well is that you can actually hide the uh, holes that you drill with, a, with a, a wooden plug so without further ado let's go out in the shed and uh, I'll show you how to do it these are the items we need to get started So the drill bit we're viewing here is a little bit different to most drill bits. It has a uh, sort of a pilot hole and then the actual diameter of the drill. There's an adjustable collar which is used to uh, adjust the depth of the hole we're drilling and that is regulated by the size of the material we're drilling into. So in order to adjust that depth, uh, there's a small grub screw, you need an Allen key, Allen wrench, just loosen it off and um, you can just move this collar up and down to the desired positioning. So to get our correct drill depth we can uh, loosen off the collar and align the stepped up part of the drill with the white lines that you see that have the uh, correct spacings and dimensions necessary. Fastening the workpiece to the jig is quite easy. This is a toggle clamp setup. Um, it has a minor adjustment, a nut adjustment, uh, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Uh, this holds your workpiece in very solidly and uh, it won't move when you're drilling it. So now we have the drill depth set up, it's time to set up the depth uh, for the type of sizing of material that we are using. So this screw enables us to now adjust this part of the jig uh, to, to correlate with the drill depth and uh, most manufacturers handbooks uh, provide the necessary information on the correct settings and there's also a DVD provided. Now we can look down upon the three holes there at different widths to one another and whichever you choose uh, will be determined by 
the width of the material you're drilling into. So here comes the fun part. You've got everything set up properly. Uh, it's just a matter of now drilling and drilling and drilling. Hook up your uh, vacuum so it gets rid of a lot of that dust and still drilling. Good fun. And there we have two pocket holes ready to construct our project. So once we're ready to commence with the joinery side of things, uh, it's pretty important that we clamp everything down very tight. So those two pieces have to sort of be nearly locked into position before we drive the screws in. So these are the screws that are used for pocket hole joinery. They're type of a pan head screw. Uh, the drive on these is a uh, square drive and it's a number two square drive bit. Uh, as you can see, pre-check, make sure you have got the right bit uh, and you're ready to go. So you can see here, I'm just uh, putting the screw into the pocket hole, uh, get our impact driver with our bit and just put a bit of light pressure on, drive the screw in and you can feel it, it'll take up the slack and uh, lock into place. So these screws come in both uh, a fine thread and a coarse thread. So the fine thread screws are used in particular for hardwoods. Uh, as you can see here, we're just using some soft pine, so the coarse thread is adequate here. So we've now locked our two pieces together. You can see this is rock solid. It's not going to come apart. Uh, you can always use a little bit of glue if you wanted to as well. Uh, but gee whiz, this is great stuff. So these are pocket hole plugs. Uh, you can purchase these or you can buy yourself a jig where you can actually make your own. Uh, it's probably a good thing to make your own because you can get exactly the same timber match but for the, the sake of this demonstration uh, you can see these slip into the cavity nicely and they if they're not flush uh, you can always give them a light sand and you know that will blend it in just use a little bit of glue and uh, any evidence of a screw will be gone forever Well there we go, uh, just a bit of a brief overview on what pocket hole joinery uh, is all about. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, many folk in, in the United States, probably where this type of joinery technique originates from, uh, are very familiar with it, but here in Australia it's still a little bit of an unknown factor um, and I suppose the more that learn about how this works uh, will encourage you uh, to perhaps go and purchase this product. There's quite a few on the market. The one particular brand I'm using is comes in blue packaging, as does most of their other products, and I, I recommend it, but the choice is yours. Have a do a bit of research and if it's a form of uh, if it's a type of tool you would like to use, go out and get it and go and build something. It's good stuff. I do want to thank in particular 
a couple of people who have just been uh, very, very good in giving me some positive feedback as to you know how I'm going and all that. Uh, one of those is uh, good old Tony Pazano. He's um, he does some woodwork himself, and I've seen some of the projects he's taken on. Fantastic stuff. So thank you, thank you very much, Pazano. Uh, come stay. That's about all the Italian I know. Um, Richard Hill, the tech guy, he's, uh, he knows all this stuff. I'm, I'm just a novice. Learning, feeling my way through the woods, uh, blindfolded, but you know, I see a bit of light coming at the end of the, the uh, on the horizon here, uh, so I'll just keep trying my best. Uh, thanks to the patience of my beautiful partner, Leanne. Uh, she's always there. Um, she makes me the cup of tea, lunch, you know, I'm out in the shed, I'm bolting around doing this, doing that, so thank you darling. Also a personal note goes to uh, Barb, uh, thank you very much for all your support over the years, uh, very, very um, good influence on my life. Uh, Jessie and Wendy, who are locals here, Wendy is a photographer, she, she's got some very good photography, uh, captured some of the local landscape, some of the bird life. Uh, I live in a rural setting in Victoria, so um, we have a lot of waterways and you know, so where bird life is abundant and uh, she does a great job. Uh, Jessie, she's a radio host somewhere up in Queensland. Uh, she's been very encouraging, encouraging as well and uh, give me some good pointers, so thanks. Thanks for that, guys. Now, very importantly, all you wonderful folks who uh, view YouTube who view videos on uh, craft type projects that people do, uh, woodworking, outdoor gardening, whatever you view. It's the world's at our uh, fingertip nowadays and it's just great that we can access, uh, you know, information on hand as we need it. So uh, uh, a big thank you to the people who have subscribed to Sumo's projects so far. Um, be sure to have a look at uh, a couple of the people I, I view on YouTube. Uh, Down Under Woodworks, fellow up in Sydney, he does a great job, he's committed and uh, he's done some really fantastic uh, builds in his garage and just getting you know his jigs and fixes and his work setting and workflow up to scratch, great stuff. Andreas Kalt, uh, he has a channel, I think he's in Germany. Uh, the, the channel is called Holtz Handcraft, which uh, translates to Woodcraft. Uh, thank you, uh, Google Search, for giving me that translation. Also, a couple of very good content creators in the US. Uh, King's Fine Woodworking, check that out. Um, Bob Lee's Workshop, thanks to Jake from Northside Custom Crafts, check that channel out. Uh, just viewed not long ago, a chopping board he made, wow, geez, a lot of detail, have a look at that. And also craft and workshop, so thanks guys, top stuff. Yeah. Last but not least, a uh, massive shout out to Neil McKinlay in Scotland. Uh, I believe he's Scottish, if you live in Scotland, you should be Scottish. Um, he, he's a funny chap, Neil's a grouse bloke, he just, uh, he, he's a tradesperson. He, he loves working in the garage, he's a good woodworker. Uh, he, he loves to have a yak, have a chat, and uh, he's got a heart of gold. And he, he gave me a little bit of encouragement to say, all right, put a camera in front of yourself, son, and uh, uh, see what you can do. So thank you very much, Neil. Uh, it's appreciated, and uh, everyone check out Neil's channel. Uh, he's a grouse cobber. So here's just a little bit of imagery of the uh, build from last week, the toilet roll holder. Uh, it's all set up in the bathroom now and working a treat.